Hey up, there's a frequently asked question that I get in my comments section on a regular basis. A question that's actually not just restricted to the comments on this channel. Because whenever I'm out and about on the bullet, someone will always come over to the bike. Or you'll come out of a shop and someone will be standing by your bike waiting for you to turn up. Now, in the latter case, what usually happens is there's a look of complete confusion on the face of the beholder. He'll look at the bike and then he'll look at the registration plate and then he'll look at the bike again and then he'll look at the registration plate again and then he'll ask me if I restored the bike myself. I inform them that actually this is, to all intents and purposes, a new motorcycle. And then that question comes along, the same question that I get in the comments section on my videos. Are these made in India now? Now, this question used to surprise me. Sometimes, depending on the tone of the question, it would also annoy me. Because quite often, especially in the comments section on my videos, it's put in a derogatory context. As though somehow it's not a real Royal Enfield because it's not made in Redditch in England. Now, as I said, this used to surprise me and it took a little while for me to realise that I'm just a Royal Enfield geek that's followed this brand for over 30 years now. And these people that I'm referencing are not. They don't appreciate the full history of the brand or the bullet. In fact, believe it or not, there are quite a lot of people out there that believe that the Royal Enfield brand is a recent acquisition of an old, long-dead name that's been out of production for decades. In fact, when you tell some people that the bullet has been in production in India for 66 years, and that in actual fact it's been in production in India longer than it was ever in production in the UK, they look at you like you're pulling the leg. Now, I think people can be forgiven for this mindset. For a lot of people, the bullet was never on their radar. And the waters have probably been muddied further by the introduction of the Himalayan some years ago, and then more recently the 650 Twins. Perhaps giving the impression to a lot of people that the brand has just suddenly resurfaced from nowhere. But the fact is, Royal Enfield has been in continuous business since 1901. 121 years. But that would never have been possible without the bullet and the bullet derived models. And the classic is very closely a bullet derived model, even the new 350 classic. The very first bullet hit the roads in 1931. Now, I have struggled to get my hands on photographs of the original 1931 models. This one is slightly later. From 1931 till 1939, the bike had a Gerda type front fork system. This bike is actually a post-1939 model. With the hydraulic front forks being added in the 1939 refresh, it was a four-stroke single-cylinder motorcycle in 350 and 500 cc iterations then later on a 250 was added to the range for a while this bike became a favorite of the british armed forces the sprung seat which is familiar on the current classic models was a necessity on these old bone shakers because they still had a rigid back end but then so did all bikes back in those days and it certainly didn't stop the bullet from earning an enviable reputation in world war ii its low center of gravity coupled with a rugged construction and reliable service made it a firm favorite among dispatch riders and in 1949 royal enfield decided to build upon this reputation in a model refresh that gave birth to the iconic Royal Enfield bullet that we know today. This time a number of changes were made to the bullet to bring it bang up to date. A brand new single cylinder engine was developed but it was still coupled to the original Albion gearbox. The bullet was the first bike in motorcycle history to incorporate a rear swing arm suspension supported on hydraulic shocks. This didn't just make the bike more comfortable to ride, it made it handle better especially off-road, a lesson that Royal Enfield had learned during World War II in the theatre of war. In fact, the bullet was so good off-road compared to the competition that Royal Enfield released a trials version which was later to be made famous by the exploits of Johnny Britton. And the 1949 version also saw the introduction of the Nacelle, a one-piece cast aluminium enclosure 
that incorporated the instrument panel and the headlamp. Once again, an iconic feature of the bullet model. It is still in use today. Now, in 1953, the relatively new Indian Army needed motorcycles for general military use and patrolling of their borders. And the 350 bullet had such a reputation that they approached Royal Enfield with an order of 800 motorcycles. But it didn't stop there. The Indian military wanted more bikes. And the Indian police forces were so impressed with these bikes that they decided they wanted them as well. Constructing these bikes in the UK and then shipping them over to India along with spare parts was an enormous task. And eventually in 1956 it was decided to set up a manufacturing facility in India simply to make the logistics of demand there easier to cope with. Initially the bikes were just built from parts manufactured in the UK and shipped over. But eventually Enfield India were building these bikes from scratch under license using tooling sent over from the Redditch factory. Now this is where if you like the bullet family tree sort of split. You see in 1956 the Redditch factory in the UK retooled and brought out what was to be the last UK version of the bullet. So the tooling sent across to the Indian factory was the old and relatively worn out tooling from the 1949 refresh. The updated 1956 Redditch model continued in manufacture for some time, but by the 1960s competition from Japan was making this model more and more irrelevant and it eventually faded into obscurity with Royal Enfield UK finally closing its doors in 1971. Now as time went on the Indian military and police had reached their full complement of motorcycles they only needed to replace them as the older bikes were no longer serviceable and understandably orders decreased but this gave an opportunity for the Indian public to become owners of this iconic bike. There were other models of motorcycle available to the Indian public but the bullets use by the military and the police had given it a special status. It was considered the motorcycle to have, especially the 350 version. But just as the Redditch Royal Enfield eventually succumbed to the advent of better, more modern machines, the iconic Enfield India Bullet eventually started to run into problems. The old 1949 tooling was well past its sell-by date and a lack of investment by Enfield India meant that the quality control and reliability of these bikes were falling by the wayside. They started to lose sales to modern competition and by the mid-1990s Enfield India was facing bankruptcy. The industrial giant Aisha Motors bought the brand out, saving the brand from liquidation but they still allowed Enfield India to just continue as it had done for several years. Until in the early 2000s Siddhartha Lal of Aisha Motors took a particular interest in the brand and started to build it back up again. He reacquired the Royal Enfield name and initially refreshened the brand by introducing several new bullet derived models. Initially this was enough to revive the brand, but ever tightening emissions regulations around the world dictated that the pre-unit single cylinder engine was no longer viable and in around 2008-2009 he introduced a brand new modern up to date unit construction single cylinder engine. And this new engine's emissions compliance meant that it could now be exported around the world. And from there on in, the Royal Enfield brand went from strength to strength, paving the way for the Himalayan and the 650 twins. Royal Enfield reckon that there are some 3 million bullet 350s or classic 350s on the roads around the world today and in many parts of the world this 
humble little motorcycle has attained cult status, which has created a following or motorcycle culture that is without rival anywhere else in the world. In 2021, it was realized that even the new iteration of the single cylinder engine for the classic was now too old to keep up with environmental regulations. The bullet or classic 500 was axed from Royal Enfield's range with only the 350 keeping the torch burning for just over a year. I have to admit, even I thought that perhaps the bullet had now reached the end of the road. The current trend for modern classics is motorcycles from the 1960s. And although I love them for mass appeal, I thought perhaps a bullet styled on a late 1940s machine just didn't cut it anymore. And then last year something rather wonderful happened. The all new Classic 350 was announced. A brand new motorcycle from the ground up including the engine with a little bit more power and more refinement. And just like all the Royal Enfield classics that have gone before it, styled uniquely on that original 1931 bullet. Set to take the longest continually produced motorcycle in the world onto its centenary. It doesn't matter what happens now, what happens from here. The pedigree and longevity of this one model of motorcycle makes it an icon, an international phenomenon that will never happen again. It's a one-off, it's unique. Power and performance don't really matter. If they did, this bike wouldn't still be here. Once again, thank you so much for watching this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell and ensure that your account notifications are enabled. I am of course going to be back on Friday, so until then, if you're riding, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.